Sometimes when playing through a video game you'll notice clues that suggest they share a universe with another video game series, such as this guy from F-Zero who looks suspiciously like Fox McCloud from Star Fox, or when Zangief from Street Fighter pile drives Kazuya from Tekken. I know I'm coming it's subtle, but it's definitely there. Amazingly, however, some of these connections are even more well hidden than this. See for yourself in these following examples. Fans of 90s side-scrolling beat-em-ups will remember Golden Axe as the fantasy-themed one, in which you rode around on weird chicken dragons and kicked gnomes until magic potions fell out of them. It featured three characters, Tyrus Flair, an Amazonian warrior, Axe Battler, a barbarian who, confusingly, uses a sword, and Gilius Thunderhead, a dwarf who uses an axe. Who's in charge of these names, Golden Axe? What you might not expect is that this weird old beat-em-up has a connection with these Shining games, a venerable RPG series that spans dozens of releases, including the recent Shining Resonance Refrain. The very first game in the series, Shining in the Darkness, released on the Sega Mega Drive in 1991, and featured a town your adventurers could visit in between quests that featured, among other amenities, traders, a tavern, and a weapons shop, which, it turns out, is run by Axe Battler. Sorry, I mean Gilius Thunderhead. Thanks, Golden Axe developers. Unfortunately, Gilius is all business, so you never get to find out why he left the adventuring life behind to open a weapons shop. You can tell he misses it, though, mostly from the poster of a grinning gnome he's put on his wall and that he probably kicks when no one's around. Ah, those were the days. Hideo Kojima's games are always fascinating, innovative, boundary-pushing experiences, from his early efforts with Snatcher, to the Metal Gear series, to his new project Death Stranding, which is definitely a video game, and not just an excuse to spend all his time hanging out with Norman Reedus and Mads Mikkelsen on Sony's dime. Like, 90% sure it's not that. Anyway, prior to Death Stranding, Kojima's next project was going to be Silent Hills, a now-cancelled horror game that he trailed with a playable teaser known as P.T., in which he walks along a corridor being menaced by a talking paper bag, a ghost lady, and a radio. This brutal killing took place while the family was gathered at home on a Sunday afternoon. P.T. isn't the only place that radio broadcast turns up, however. It can also be heard coming out of radios found in Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, which throws up a whole host of questions. Several days before the murders, neighbors say they heard the father repeating a sequence of numbers in a loud voice. Phantom Pain is set in 1984, so does that mean P.T. is as well? Why is this playing on a radio in Africa? Is Snake cursed, like Norman Reedus' character, and when he finally gets back home is he going to spend all this time walking down a corridor? Is this just a random easter egg and not to be taken too seriously? I mean, obviously not that last one, but the others all make sense. <laughs> At first glance, 1990's side-scrolling platformer Commander Keen doesn't appear to have much in common with Wolfenstein 3D, a game in which you shoot and stab hordes of Nazis, or Doom, a game in which you shoot and chainsaw hordes of Hell Demons. In actual fact, however, all these games are connected through the protagonists being related to each other. First up is BJ Blazkowicz, hero of Wolfenstein and scourge of Nazis everywhere. BJ is the grandfather of Commander Keen's hero, Billy Blaze, whose real name is William J. Blazkowicz II. Doom Guy, meanwhile, the space marine you play as in Doom, is also a Blazkowicz, descended from Commander Keen, and seems to have the family hair. So, everyone's related, which is nice, but also makes this secret level in Doom 2 way, way more unsettling. <laughs> Kane and Lynch from the Kane and Lynch games and Agent 47 from the Hitman series are sort of polar opposites in that one is a cold, calm, calculated professional and the others are, well, Kane and Lynch. <laughs> Oh, no! 
Still, that doesn't stop the fact that the chrome-domed Master Assassin and the chaotic destructive duo share a universe, which was first revealed by newspaper articles detailing their exploits in Hitman Blood Money, and then made rather more explicit in Hitman Absolution by the fact that you actually run into them both in the course of the game. Kane in a bar in the Welcome to Hope mission, and Lynch hanging around in the firing range in the mission Birdie's Gift. Boom. Oh. Oh god. Oh come on, like you didn't do the same thing. What confuses matters slightly is the discovery of a couple of militiamen playing Kane and Lynch 2 in Hitman's Colorado level. Nerds! Unless they're just watching the news and holding video game controllers for some reason? That said, it's probably pretty hard to get the latest pre-orders delivered to a remote militia compound in Colorado. Or maybe I need to remind you the kind of people we'd be crossing here. Sully, I know the risks. But come on, it's a surefire plan. Game developer Naughty Dog are most famous for a particular game. I am, of course, talking about 1994 Mortal Kombat clone Way of the Warrior. Total carnage. Super carnage. Wait, no, I mean Uncharted and its sequels. Yes, that's better. However, they're also the developer behind the critically acclaimed laugh a minute yuck fest, The Last of Us. <laughs> While things in the Uncharted universe might seem a little less bleak than what's going on in the Last of Us universe, that might not be the case for very long, as it seems they are in fact the same universe and not all that far apart in time. We know this thanks to the discovery of a newspaper in Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception, which features a headline talking about scientists struggling to understand a deadly fungus. If you remember The Last of Us, you'll know that a lot of that game was spent trying not to be murdered by people who had been turned into terrifying clickers by, that's right, a deadly fungus. Nice job, scientists. <laughs> So bear that in mind whenever you're enjoying Nate's wisecracking high adventures. The whole world is probably just a few short months away from mass panic, riots, and everyone becoming a bloodthirsty monster with fungus for a face. No word on whether Way of the Warrior is also set in the Uncharted slash Last of Us universe, but we'll be keeping an eye out for Shaky Jake and major gains in the upcoming Last of Us 2. I mean, if anyone can survive a zombie apocalypse, it's those guys. Shocking. At some point during the development of time-bending action-adventure Quantum Break, developer Remedy took one look at the confusing shared universe hints in Hitman, Metal Gear and the like, and instructed the world to hold their beer. That's the only explanation we can think of for the sheer weight of references to Alan Wake that are found in Quantum Break, some of which make sense, some of which cause our brains to… well, Quantum Break. First of all, there's the moment early in Quantum Break where protagonist Jack Joyce stumbles on a chalkboard covered in notes from what was apparently a lecture on Alan Wake. So Alan Wake exists as a work of fiction in the Quantum Break universe, which makes sense, except for the fact that in the first episode of the live-action Quantum Break TV show, you catch a glimpse of a novel written by Alan Wake. I'm looking for... Mr. Wake. Alan Wake. Oh god, I am your biggest fan. So actually Alan Wake is an author in the world of Quantum Break. Or not. Also the Twilight Zone style show Night Springs, which appears in Alan Wake, also apparently exists in Quantum Break if the early character's t-shirt in this trailer is anything to go by. So there you have it, proof that something is going on? Man, this is like something out of an episode of Night Springs. Most of us have felt its shadow on us. A shiver down your back. A glimpse from the corner of the eye. Yeah, exactly. Ah, there's the boss, Olivier Garneau, our CCO. I'll introduce you. Bonjour. Salut, Mélanie. Ça va bien? Well, thanks. Have you met our new hire? Just started today. I haven't. Bonjour. What project? Sample 17, the Kenway line. Hey them, Connor. Edward, the pirate. Ah, ar, yar, maybe. <laughs> People had long suspected that historical stab em up Assassin's Creed and modern day hack em up watchdogs were set in the same universe. First, there were the Easter eggs in Watch Dogs 1 and 2, and Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag included references to Bloom, the organization responsible for CTOS in Watch Dogs. The biggest clue that these two games shared a universe, however, was the character Olivier Garneau from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, who appears in that game's modern day section, as well as turning up in a side mission in Watch Dogs. <laughs> Previously, this has been written off as non-canon by Ubisoft. That was until Assassin's Creed Origins, in which you can find a CCTV still of Garno on a laptop being killed by a very familiar looking hacker in a baseball cap and long coat. 
Bit harsh, Aiden. Couldn't you have just leaked all his embarrassing Spotify playlists so that everyone knows he's a massive fan of new metal? That's a fate worse than death. Still, that makes the Watch Dogs side mission in which you hack a Ubisoft executive who starts talking about Assassin's Creed games a bit confusing. But hey, this is Watch Dogs. Let's just say that something got hacked. Sure. I can assure you there's no way the trailer is getting out. Those are some of our favourite connections between video games, but if we've missed off one of your favourites, drop it in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this from outside Xbox every week. Thanks for watching!